Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody to do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody to do this wonderful The Lord just brought me through the night, through the night. So I face a challenging day before He take me away behind to the grind. Success on my mind. Good morning, me neighbor. Good morning. The how everybody they do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray. Said thank you, Lord. brothers and sisters in Christ and welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Police. Today is the 13th day of February in 2024 and outside I have slightly overcast skies, a semi-angry looking sea and really really wonderful wind rocking through the coconut trees outside the window. I hope you're having a beautiful morning where you are this morning. It's the eve of Ash Wednesday, Shrove Tuesday, as it is called, and we will talk a little bit about that just in a little while. But first, let us begin with our opening hymn. This one is entitled, I Will Bow and Be Simple. Let's have a listen.
that one there I will bow and be simple and I like it because it is a song symbolizing the submission of oneself to the will of God and we're going to talk about Shrove Tuesday and that submission in a little while but first let's get our words here up on screen for today February the 13th in 2023. From the rising of the sun to its setting, my name shall be great among the nations, and in every place incense shall be offered to my name. A pure offering, for my name shall be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. Words from Malachi chapter 1 verse 11. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, we continue with versicle 2 on page 35. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God our Saviour, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Our invitatory prayer. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. <laughs> our first canticle for this morning is the canticle Psalm 100, which is the Jubilate. If you're following along in your books of common prayer, it can be found on page 37. <coughs> Pardon me. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good, his loving mercy is forever, his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. At this time, we pause to mind those things that in thought, word, or deed we may have committed, things that might have been displeasing to Almighty God, things that might have been unjust to our neighbors, or things perhaps that might have been unkind even to ourselves. For those times and those moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, for the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Psalms appointed for this morning are Psalms 26 and 28, and using a previously recorded version of the Psalm, reading for us this morning is Mrs. Monique Usher. Let's have a listen. The Psalm appointed for today is Psalm 26, and 28. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind, for your love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. Do not sweep me away with sinners, nor my life with those who thirst for blood, whose hands are full of evil plots and their right hand full of bribes. As for me, I will live with integrity. Redeem me, O Lord, and have pity on me. My foot stands on level ground. In the full assembly, I will bless the Lord. O Lord, 
I call you, my rock. Do not be deaf to my cry. Lest if you do not hear me, I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my prayer when I cry out to you, when I lift up my hands to your holy of holies. Do not snatch me away with the wicked or with the evildoers, who speak peaceably with their neighbors, while strife is in their hearts. Repay them according to their deeds, and according to the wickedness of their actions. According to the work of their hands, repay them, and give them their just deserts. They have no understanding of the Lord's doing, nor of the work of his hands. Before, therefore, he will break them down and not build them up. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my prayer. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I have been helped. Therefore, my heart dances for joy, and in my song will I praise him. The Lord is the strength of his people a safe refuge for his anointed. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them and carry them forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Amen. We want to thank Mrs. Usher for leading us in the reading of the Psalms. Our second canticle for this morning is the Canticle de Benedictus, which is based on Luke chapter 1, verse 68 through to 17. Blessed are you, Lord the God of Israel, who have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebearers, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, who was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Our Bible reading for this morning comes from the Gospel according to John, John chapter 18, verses 28 to 38. Let's have a listen. A reading from the Word of God, within the Gospel according to John, John chapter 18, verse 28 through to 38. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to, to them and said, What accusations do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourself and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own? Or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate said to him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After he had said this, 
he went out to the Jews again and told them, I have found no case against him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you would be so kind as to allow me a couple of seconds to get back to the beginning of the reading from the Gospel according to John chapter 18 verse 28 to 28 and it should be up by now. It is a look at the, well a continuation of the look we started yesterday. Yesterday we looked at the denial of Peter um, in the courtyards of Annas and we heard um, a little bit about the confrontation between Annas and Caiaphas and Jesus and today of course they would have shipped Jesus off over to Pilate's headquarters. And it is where Pilate is supposed to be judging Jesus and making a pronouncement on behalf of the Jews as to whether he is guilty or not of blasphemy or of whatever charges they brought against him and whether or not they were going to be able to get a death sentence from him. And it's interesting that the readings jump all the way to John chapter 18 um, as it did yesterday and today, but it is in preparation, of course, for Lent. Lent begins tomorrow with Ash Wednesday, and so all the readings are making preparations for going that direction, and I'm sure that somewhere in the churches, clergy and lay ministers are making preparations as well. And in some parts of the world, today there is Carnival, there is Mardi Gras in Louisiana, and Carnival in Trinidad, as they celebrate what is called Shrove Tuesday. And Shrove Tuesday, also known as Mardi Gras Pancake Tuesday or Pancake Day, is the final day of Carnival or Shrove Tide that marks the end of the pre-Lent season. Lent, of course, beginning tomorrow on Ash Wednesday. And Shrove Tuesday is observed in many Christian countries. And in terms of church, in terms of church, it requires the participation in confession and absolution, the ritual burning of the previous year's Holy Week palms in order to make the ashes for Ash Wednesday. It requires the finalizing of one's decision as to what their Lenten sacrifice will be. And of course, the eating of pancakes and other sweets. Now, it is well observed by Anglicans, Lutherans, Methodists, and Roman Catholics um, Shrove Tuesday is supposed to be a special point of, of self-examination, of considering what wrongs we need to repent of, confess of and repent of, what amendments we need to make in our lives with regards to our spiritual growth, pardon me, and asking God to help us to deal with it. Now, Shrove Tuesday is not a fixed date. It is a movable feast determined by the date on which Easter will land. Because true of Tuesday is generally 47, I think it is, 47 days before Easter, right? And so it moves and it could be as early as February the 3rd and all the way down, I believe, in um, in March. Because like, I think next year, it's true of Tuesday is going to be on, on March the 4th. Because Easter is going to be later next year than it is this year. Um, and... As the last day of the Christian liturgical season of, of Epiphany, yes, historically Carnival or Shrove Tuesday, again, is the start or the ending of the regular season before the penitential season of Lent begins. And when you consider that Lenten sacrifices for the next 40 days is going to uh, take place, then Shrove Tuesday is normally associated with celebration, yeah? Mardi Gras or Fat Tuesday for the French, yeah? And it's the last night of eating richer, fatty foods, sugary foods before you begin that Lenten fast that is going to happen starting on Ash Wednesday. Um, in the in the UK, I think it is, it is called Pancake Day and it is traditionally a pancake breakfast where you're going to use up the flour and the milk and the eggs because those are things that you'll be cutting out of your diet come Ash Wednesday tomorrow. Um, but with the in terms of the liturgy, Shrove Tuesday, of course, is where the palms will be um, burnt, and you would have been collecting palms. Most churches now don't collect back the crosses. Most churches now reserve a certain amount of blessed palms from 
last year's Palm Sunday that they could burn to make ashes because if we depended upon people bringing back their palm cross, they wouldn't get very many. Yes, in the old days, you would have asked a week or two before Ash Wednesday for people to return their palms that it could be burnt. Yeah, but yeah, it's what it is. And when we look at the history of it, no, it started somewhere around 1000 AD. Yeah, um, the week immediately before Lent, everybody began to go to their confessor to confess their deeds, and the confessor should shrive them. And the word shrive, of course, is an English word which means give absolution for somebody's sin by way of confession or doing penance. And so Shrove Tuesday was named after the custom of Christians being able to shrive before the start of Lent, being able to do their confession. And, you know, it's it's interesting that in the, in the Anglican Church, while we have a litany for reconciliation, and we're going to, in most churches tomorrow as a part of the Ash Wednesday service, we'll be looking at the penitential order. And for me, um, in, in our churches in the South and in our devotions with our, with our staff and children, what we do is we go through the litany of penitence, right, versus the, um, versus the confession. That's what we're going to be doing tomorrow. We're going to go through the litany of penitence so that it's, it's an opportunity for people to reflect on perhaps where they would have done things that was not fully in tune with the will of God and not the very best with regards to the well-being of themselves and their neighbors. And so it will be an opportunity for them to make their confession of sorts tomorrow for those persons who personally would like confession. I am sure that could be organized with your priest that you could make your confession before the beginning of your 40 days sojourn with Jesus. And I have to be honest with you, Lent for me is, is a beautiful period of time. In my mind, Lent is a time of reflection. It's a time of, of deeper examination of self in order to have one, one's relationship with God, one's spiritual walk with Christ strengthened. And it, it's, I don't normally give up anything for Lent. This year, I am going to be trying a Daniel fast for the 40 days of Lent um, because it is necessary, I believe, both for physical and spiritual cleansing and healing that I do that this year. But whatever it is that you are giving up for Lent, remember that you're not giving things up because of physical or worldly desires or gains. When you give up something for Lent, when you come to make your confession on Shrove Tuesday, it's supposed to be from a spiritual place. One of the things I mentioned recently in church was that if you're going to give up, let's say, drinking Coca-Cola for the next 40 days, a bottle of Coke is $2.50 or some foolishness like that. I don't drink soft drink very often, so I don't know. But let's say a bottle of Coke is $2.50. Every time you have the urge in the next 40 days to drink a Coke, if you're going to give up Coke, put that $2.50 in a container somewhere. Yeah. When the desire comes, pray and ask God to give you strength to not yield to that desire. Pray and give God thanks that this is an opportunity where instead of giving in to a physical craving, you're using that time to give yourself over to Him and then take that money and put it in a container. At the end of Lent, you'll be surprised at how many $2.50 you would have put aside. And you could take all the money that you put aside and you either could donate it to the church or you could use it to buy some groceries to give to a needy family or you could pay somebody's light bill or something, something. But at the end of the period of time, it is not so much about just doing well for my body by not drinking Coke for 40 days. It is all about using that time meaningfully to develop your spiritual strength and your relationship with Christ. And of course, as somebody reminded me on Sunday, if I'm going for 40 days without the Coke, and then Holy Saturday, I buy the biggest bottle of Coke ever, because then Sunday, Easter Sunday, I'm going to drink my heart's delight, then we still would have missed the point. Yes? We still would have missed the point. The point is making sure that as we abstain from something, we replace it with something, and the something we're supposed to replace it with is supposed to be something in terms of strengthening our spiritual walk with God. So that's basically Shrove Tuesday, and it serves dual purpose, really. Yeah, 
allowing Christians to repent of any sins they might have made before the start of Lent on the next day, Ash Wednesday, and also giving an opportunity to engage in a last rung of merriment before the somber season of Lent starts. And of course, the season of Lent marked with Lent and sacrifice, fasting, prayer, and engaging in spiritual discipline, such as a Lenten calendar. And I saw a Lenten calendar and daily devotion for young people that was shared yesterday. So I think as a diocese, we're going to try to make sure that there are activities and plans that goes along with our Lenten fast. No? So that's true of Tuesday in a nutshell. Um, and of course, um, it's, it's a beautiful practice if we understand what the practice is all about. Yeah, it's a beautiful practice. And we don't go through all the festivities like they do. There is um, pancake races in the UK. There is Mardi Gras in Louisiana. There is Carnival in Trinidad. And we don't go through anything like that really here in Belize. But it is still a time where we can, of course, <clears throat> pardon me, we can, of course, make the observances. Um, so, yeah. And, of course, it's also the day when we say goodbye to Alleluia. Hmm? During the period of Lent, the Glorias and the Alleluias can be omitted in the weekdays of Lent. Um, each Sunday is considered a little Easter. So each Sunday you are still allowed, according to the liturgy, you are still allowed to say Alleluia and Gloria. But for many of the clergy, we do not use Alleluias during the whole 40 days of Lent. And if you count, of course, 40 days, you will realize that Sundays are not included in Lent. Sundays are not included in the counting of the 40 days of Lent because Sundays are a commemoration of the resurrection of the Lord. So Sundays are not included as a part of the 40 days of Lent. And so on Sundays, if you care, in some churches, they're still using Alleluia and still saying the Gloria. That is acceptable. Hmm? It is the weekdays of Lent in which traditionally the Alleluia and the Gloria are to be omitted. So come tomorrow, you will not see any Gloria at the ending of the psalm or at the ending of any of our canticles, right? So basically, that's what I wanted to share this morning. Just a little bit of context of what we do and why we do it. I am a firm believer that if we understand the purpose huh, behind the actions that we do, then it will give more meaning and more significance to the things that we are doing. So... 40 days of Lent beginning tomorrow, today being Shrove Tuesday. Please make sure you take the time to observe a moment for confession and reconciliation with God. And if you're going to do Pancake Tuesday, enjoy your pancakes and enjoy cleaning out the fridge of the temptations if you will be making the sacrifice of fasting and prayer for this Lent. I do pray you have a blessed True of Tuesday, and of course, of course, I wish you a safe and blessed Lenten season as well. Let us continue then with the profession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the throne. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. 
For our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage A on page 43 in our books of common prayer. Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. Our first colour for today is the colour for the last Sunday after the Epiphany. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Together we say a prayer for the poor and neglected. <laughs> Almighty and most merciful God, we remember before you all poor and neglected persons whom it would be easy for us to forget, the homeless and the destitute, the old and the sick, and all who have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit and to turn their sorrow into joy. Grant this, Father, for the love of your Son, who for our sake became poor, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we turn to our prayers of personal intercessions and thanksgiving. This morning, we would like to send congratulations to Mr. Ralph and Miss Dominique Rodriguez who celebrated a wedding anniversary yesterday. Celebrating a birthday today is Mrs. Edna Amu, Mrs. Laverne May, and Mr. Matthew Rosado. We pray, ladies and gentlemen, that you will have a blessed and beautiful birthday and that indeed God's blessings continue to be upon you, not just for today, for your birthdays, but for all the remaining days of your life. Happy birthday! In our prayers, we continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember and pray for Miss Judith, Miss Eileen, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine, Miss Maria, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, Miss Kim, and Miss Joycelyn. We remember and pray for Miss Monica, Miss Sylvia, Miss Des, Miss Aislin, Miss Justine, Miss Lisa, Miss Soila, Miss Beryl, Miss Janet, Miss Marley, and Miss Toya. We pray for Miss Margaret, Miss Myrna, Miss Janice, Miss Dylan. Miss Alma, Miss Marlene, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Venancia, Miss Molly, Miss Melita, Miss Betty, Miss Martha, Miss Marva, Miss Gloria, Miss Celestina, Miss Jessica, Miss LaShawn, Miss Althea, Miss Teresa, Miss Amy, and Miss Marie. We pray for Miss Agnes, Miss Lena, Miss Loretta, Miss Barbara, Miss Ruby, Miss Arlene, Miss Yolanda. Miss Janice, Miss Glenda, Miss Salome, and Miss Felicia. We pray for Miss Priscilla, Miss Jean, Miss Alma, Miss Maud, Miss Elma, Miss Delvarine, Miss Lorraine, Miss Geraldine, Miss Myrtle, Miss Sonia, and Miss Petrona. We remember and pray for Miss Verilyn, Miss Carol, Miss Jasmine, Miss Allaire, Miss Nina, Miss Leonore, Miss Tanya, Miss Robin, Miss Patricia, Miss Camille, Miss Kieron, Miss Joyce, Miss Marcia, Miss Ismay, Miss Joan, Miss Ulichi, Miss Lisa T, Miss Rita, Miss Louise, Miss Fiona, Miss Caroline, Miss Catherine, 
Miss Kalea, Miss Velina, Reverend Kilona, Miss Sharon, Miss Elva, Miss Nadia, Miss Eleanor, Miss Lynette, Miss Shelma Dean, Reverend Linda, Miss Dominic, Miss Danisha, Miss Brenda G, Miss Bernadine, Miss Sandra, Miss Gretel, Miss Sheila, Miss Irene, Miss Pat, Miss Michelle, Miss Sophie, Miss Jean, Miss Angela, Miss Perla, Miss Anne, Miss Maisie, Miss Charlene, Miss Megan, Miss Tessa, Miss Dillis, Miss Julianne, Miss Shanice, Miss Kimberly, Miss Suzette, and Miss Dorothy B. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for the following of our brothers. We remember and pray for Mr. Zeal, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenwick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, Mr. Jeffrey, Mr. Tony, Mr. Gary, Mr. Dudley, Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Freddy, Mr. Dion, Mr. Charles, Mr. Edmundo, Mr. Ian, Mr. Belham. We pray for Mr. Leroy Jr., Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ismail, Mr. Clement, Mr. Walter, Mr. Edgar Jr., Mr. Carlos, Mr. Sean, Mr. Lewis, Mr. Clinton, Mr. Emmett, Mr. Mark, Mr. Lyndon, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Bion, and Mr. Pablo. We remember and pray for Father Constancio, Mr. Russell, Mr. Kirk, Sir Cosmo, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Michael Soberanis, Mr. Brindel, Mr. Ambrose, and Mr. Peter H. We give thanks as well, and we pray for continued healing for Mr. Gustavo, Mr. Lincoln, Mr. Grayson, Bishop Curry, Mr. Trevor, Mr. Chris, Mr. Ernest, Father Mark, Mr. David, Mr. Carmen, Mr. Peter, Mr. Albert, Mr. Omar, Mr. Jervis, Mr. Irvin, Mr. Richard, Mr. Lloyd, Mr. Kieran, Mr. Marlon, Mr. Ted, Mr. Donald, Mr. Paul, and Bishop Wright. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for persons who recently contracted COVID-19, those in their various forms of isolation, those who care for persons in isolation, we give God thanks for the availability of a vaccine as we pray for the containment and the elimination of this COVID-19. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for those who care for the infirm, remembering all of our medical professionals in the performance of their duties, both in public and private institutions. We especially remember and pray for Drs. Hidalgo, Ariaga, Lawrence, Flores, Eck, Manzanero, Arnold, Joseph Cuellar, Arana, Mugia, Ken, Young, Sosa, Shogreen, and Molina. We pray for Nurse McKinn, Nurse Joyce Lynn, Nurse Olivia, Nurse Julie, Nurse Lino, Nurse Gill, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Ashley, Nurse Aurel, Nurse Aaron, Nurse Cadogan, Nurse Cherie, and Nurse Alejandra. For all of our doctors, our nurses, our pharmacists, our lab technicians, our radiologists, those persons working in administrative offices, the cook, the cleaners, the adlers, all who work in the medical professional profession, both in public and private institutions. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for those who are unable to pray for themselves. We pray, Heavenly Father, give us life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants, and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs, that those for whom our prayers are offered may be strengthened in their weakness, have confidence in your loving care, and experience your healing grace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. In our prayers, we continue to pray for comfort for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We continue to remember and pray for the family of Mr. Kenny Castillo, the family of Ms. Sherry Molina, the family of Mr. Denzel Pival, the family of Ms. Justina Morales, the family of Ms. Emma Francis, and the family of Ms. and the family of Miss Cynthia Brooks. In our prayers, we continue to pray for God's comfort upon those who are bereaved, even as we pray for eternal rest for those who have died. In our prayers, we continue to pray for God's protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We remember and pray for our students, praying for Elisa, Amit, Randolph, Ashley, Angel, Harriet, Paige, Karina, Ria, Freedom, 
Courtney, I, Jamal, Arian, Akula, and Tiffany. We pray for our loved ones in the military, praying for Jason, Charles S., Derek, and Neil, Prince, Charles C., Candy, Sam, Gavin, Christopher, and Isha. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for those who are most vulnerable in our society, for the poor, the needy, the homeless, the elderly, persons with pre-existing health conditions, persons struggling with mucus, persons struggling with MS, persons struggling with HIV and AIDS, persons struggling with mental health challenges, persons struggling with um, cancer, persons struggling with substance abuse issues. We pray for God's provision and protection over you at this time. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for our security forces, for the various branches of our government, for the churches and the church leadership, for the private sector, for all non-governmental organizations involved in any form of humanitarian aid, for all persons in positions of public trust and authority. We remember and pray for God's wisdom and guidance to be upon you as you lead his people. In our prayers, we pray for the members of the international community, for those affected by the ravages of war and civil unrest, those affected by the ravages of natural disasters. We continue to remember and pray for them even as we pray for ourselves and our region, for protection against the ravages of civil unrest and against natural disasters. For the prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God would hear us. We conclude our intercessions by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of the laws and the works of your commandments, that under your protection now and ever we may be preserved in body and soul through Jesus Christ our Lord. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me this morning for morning prayer. It is indeed a blessing and a privilege to be able to greet each new day in your presence as well, of course, as in the presence of Almighty God. Happy Shrove Tuesday to you. And of course, um, gentle reminders about things taking place today as well as things taking place tomorrow. Today at the Cathedral, there is their annual Shrove Tuesday hosting of the youths with diverse ability and some elders as well in the afternoon. Of course, there is entertainment, there is food, there's a train ride around the city. It's a wonderful party, yes, that the cathedral family puts off, um, inviting the children of Stella Mary School and the others to be a part of this festivity to celebrate Shrove Tuesday and to prepare for the beginning of Lent. And speaking of the beginning of Lent, of course, we have our Ash Wednesday services beginning tomorrow. Let's see if I could get that schedule up on screen here. Where is it now? There it is. So we're looking at services throughout the country for Ash Wednesday. In Orange Walk, St. Peter's Church, they have a service at 7 a.m. and they will be open until midday for the imposition of ashes. In Belize City, All Saints Church will have a service at 6.30, 8.30 and 10.30 for the school, a noonday service at midday and a 6 p.m. service. Good Shepherd will have their Ash Wednesday service at 6.30. St. Mary's has a 6.30, 8.30, 10.30, 12 and a 6 p.m. St. John's Cathedral has a 6 a.m., a midday, and a 6 p.m. There is an 8 a.m. service for ACC. Queen Square School is at 9 a.m. Sunshine Preschool will be getting their ashes at 10. St. John's Primary School at 10.30. And St. Mark's in Hatteville at 7 p.m. In the Cayo District, I went too fast, St. Anne's Church has a 6.30 service, a 12 p.m. service, I believe it is, and a 6 p.m. service. St. Agnes in um, Mahogany Heights will have a 9 a.m. St. Hilda's in Georgeville is at 9 a.m. St. Barnabas in, um, in um, Central Farm is at 9 a.m. St. Andrews in San Ignacio is at 12 noon and 6 p.m. Santa Cruz is at 6 p.m. Annunciacion is at 6 p.m. 
in the Stan Creek District. Price the King has a 6 a.m. and a 6 p.m. At 9 a.m. is the school service. At 11 a.m. is St. Matthew's in Pomona. St. Monica's and St. Jerome's will be led by their lay ministry team at 6 p.m. for their services. And of course, in Placencia, St. John's Memorial is at 8 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. And St. Michael's is Independence is at 5 p.m. So no matter where you are from north or south, you will be able to receive the imposition of ashes tomorrow at any of our churches. And of course, with regards to our school services, know that you are, as adults, invited that you could join in as well in the school services to receive your imposition of ashes. So that's our schedule in terms of Ash Wednesday service. With regards for services for the remainder of the day online, we have noonday prayers at midday, evening prayer at 5.30, and compline at 9 p.m. to close off the day. If you miss any of these online services at the scheduled time, you can always revisit the Facebook pages of the churches in the Anglican Diocese of Belize. Now, there might be questions as to morning prayer tomorrow morning. Evidently, you know that even when I'm not in front of this chair physically, morning prayer will happen. So it will be pre-recorded, but it will be aired tomorrow morning. Why? Because it is not just in Belize that we follow morning prayer. There are those who overseas join in with us for morning prayer. And so to be able to accommodate them as well, we will have pre-recorded morning prayer service tomorrow at 6 a.m. So while we're at church here in Danguiga, they could also be in morning prayer at 6 a.m. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for your continued support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Belize. And please be on the lookout for the youth calendar of activities for Lent as well. And Lent, of course, means that there will be some changes in our programming as well. Mm -hmm. So the introduction song might sound different. And of course, um, Stations of the Cross virtually at 6 a.m. 30 p.m. I believe it is on Fridays. All right. So be on the lookout for the changes. And of course, we continue to pray that you have a blessed and beautiful Lenten season when it starts tomorrow. We're going to conclude this morning with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace, the dismissal, and then our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our path, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve all persons through the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I was tempted to pull out a loud hallelujah hymn this morning since we are saying goodbye to hallelujah. But I thought to myself, mm -mm, not me. I will not yield to temptation. We're going to close off this morning with one entitled, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. And I chose this one because as we celebrate Shrove of Tuesday and we try to purge ourselves of all the niceties and temptations, let us remember that it is our mighty God that will help us during our season of penitence beginning tomorrow for the next 40 days. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful day today. Please do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Until tomorrow morning, same place, same time. God bless. Bye for now.
Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. The how everybody to do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. The how everybody to do this wonderful The Lord just brought me through the night, through the night. So I face a challenge.